SRAM's latest update to its Apex Group Set is a really important one. The new Group Set has gone 12 speed, is one by only, and brings access, wireless electronic shifting down to its lowest ever price. It's also available with mechanical shifting. Can't believe it, mechanical shifting in 2023. Apex is aimed squarely at gravel riding, commuting, and even entry-level road bikes. We expect to see a lot of this group set out on the road, so let's take a closer look and make sure you stick around as I'll come to my ride impressions later in the video. Before we dive too far into the tech, you might be wondering what it is, so let's cover the basics. Apex is SRAM's entry-level road and gravel group set. It caters for drop bar bikes as well as offering flat bar shifters that will suit hybrid bikes. So we're likely to see this on some pretty reasonably priced bikes. Not only has SRAM created a mechanical version, they're also bringing us the cheapest 12-speed electronic group set that we've ever seen, which is what loads of people have been calling for. But before you get too excited about big cycling, finally listening to customers, there's no rim brakes to be seen here. This is disc only. The mechanical design has remained pretty much unchanged from the original SRAM Force CX-1 from 2014, with its oversized hoods and dual tap shifting. Now Apex has had a complete redesign, with the shifters moving more in line with the current Force and Rival axis designs. We've got videos on both linked in the description. It still works in pretty much the same way, with one paddle on the right hand shifter taking care of both up and down shifts, the internals will have changed to account for the extra cog on the cassette, and ergonomics have also come into line with SRAM's latest stuff. While it seemed that mechanical group sets had largely been forgotten by the industry, SRAM told us that they would never gave up on the humble cable operated shift. It was just a case of the electronic group sets taking up a lot of their development time. The Apex group set has been in the pipeline for three years. Manufacturers have been engaged in something of an electronic arms race of late, with SRAM the first to drop electronic shifting down to their third tier of its road group set range with rival axis. Shimano then followed suit with 105 Di2. This, however, is the cheapest electronic group set we've seen to date, with SRAM Apex available for $1,195 or £1,262. You can expect to see complete bikes with an electronic drivetrain from around $2,500. The mechanical version starts at £1,035 or $971. SRAM expects bike prices from about $2,000. Put that in context with SRAM's rivals, Campagnolo can't equip a bike with e-car for $2,000 and if you're looking at current Shimano GRX, it's probably going to be the 10-speed RX400 or 600 at this money. SRAM is also offering an Apex power meter upgrade for $220 or £205, making it one of the cheapest crank-based power meters available. The electronic stuff will be available from June 2023 with the mechanical group following in September. To get these prices, SRAM has taken some obvious and not so obvious cost cutting steps to keep the prices down. The first is keeping the group set as a one by only affair. That limits the number of parts in the group set, which is a saving that SRAM can make on the production line. Then if we take a look at components like the rear trailer, it's clear to see that many of the designs have been dripped down from SRAM's existing Explore and Eagle stuff. SRAM's Apex cassettes start with an 11 tooth cog, despite the brand pushing 10 tooth cogs for years. While using an 11 tooth cog will reduce the gear range compared with SRAM's usual 10 tooth cog, it has, SRAM claims, allowed costs to be kept down. Using the 11 tooth cog allows SRAM to build the cassettes to Shimano's HD free hub standard. That said, you're not limited to the 11 tooth cassettes or the HD free hub standard. SRAM says that the rear derailleurs work perfectly well with its existing 10 tooth cassettes, so if you wanted to upgrade, to a wider gear range you could. You just need a rear wheel with a SRAM XD3 hub body. Though this is an upgrade commonly offered by wheel brands. A really interesting feature of the new Apex group set is that it only comes in Explore and Eagle versions. There's no two by road model or standard gearing, which might seem slightly odd, but as SRAM is aiming Apex at entry level bikes, the one by only design makes sense due to its simplicity. If you're not familiar with those names, let me clarify what Explore and Eagle mean. The Explore name is what SRAM uses to describe its gravel components. Eagle, meanwhile, is the overarching name given to SRAM's 12-speed mountain bike components. In the context of Apex, this gives you two cassette options, the 11 to 44 tooth Explore and the 11 to 52 tooth Eagle. Those two cassettes require rear derailleurs that are specific to the group set model. So let's take a closer look at them. The Explore Axis Derailleur is designed to work with cassettes with the biggest sprockets from 36 teeth to 44 teeth in size. Like Rival Axis, the derailleur manages chain bounce with a spring clutch. 
While Apex introduces an 11 tooth HD compatible cassette, the Apex Explore Axis Rear Derailleur can be used with an XDR 10 tooth cassette sprocket as well, open up compatibility with SRAM's existing 12 speed cassettes. The X1 Eagle Axis Rear Derailleur is compatible with all SRAM Eagle drivetrain cassettes. The design features a Type 3 roller bearing clutch to prevent chain slap and the overload clutch, which disengages the motor system in case of a serious impact. This helps SRAM setters to prevent damage to the rear gear shift motor and electronics. SRAM has also carried over the cage lock feature to make it easier for wheel changes and chain installation too. It's compatible with 50 and 52 tooth cassettes in both 10 and 11 tooth HD and XDR guises. Back to Apex and the brakes get a new caliper design. The more compact flat mount shape is based on the mountain bike SRAM level design. SRAM claims there's no difference in the performance of this new brake and those from the higher group sets. However, it doesn't have SRAM's bleeding edge ports, designed to make bleeding the brakes quicker and easier. Instead, the brakes use the older threaded bleed ports. The new hydraulic disc brake calipers are the same across the Axis and the mechanical versions of Apex. Aside from Apex being offered in Explore and Eagle one by only options, when it comes down to the individual parts, the only real differences between Apex and Rival, which is one rung higher on SRAM's group set ladder, are material choices and finish. They share the same electronics and motors, as well as the same brake design. So physical performance should be the same. Although we will, of course, bring you a full review soon. An Apex Access Explore setup comes in at 2,971 grams, which is roughly 100 grams heavier than the equivalent rival Access Explore drivetrain. Meanwhile, mechanical Apex Eagle now weighs in at 3,148 grams, which is the same weight as rival Access. So it's approximately 100 grams lighter than its electronic version. When it comes to Apex Eagle, things are a little different, with a mechanical derailleur based on the Eagle GX mountain bike design, but modified to include a derailleur mounted barrel adjuster. That's the tech covered, but what are these group sets like to ride? Well, luckily I managed to get my hands on both the mechanical and the electronic versions. I've had longer on the electronic group set, so we'll focus more on that, but I do want to start with the mechanical. I had the Eagle version on a gravel bike, so here are my initial impressions. The shifting is intuitive, though it works best when you don't overthink things. Downshifts are snappy and impressively fast, and not at all phased by the roughness of the terrain. Shifting into an easier gear, however, requires you to push through to the double click without hesitating. I found on a couple of occasions when I lingered on the paddle for a moment, I did get the occasional grouching noise as the chain was slowly moving across two cogs. It's something I'm sure I'll get used to as I use the group set more, but on first impressions, this is leagues ahead of the previous generation. Do you want us to do a full review on the mechanical group set? Let us know in the comments below. Moving on to the electronic version, and this time I had the Explore version mounted onto a Cervelo Aspero gravel bike for some lovely rides around the Driftless region on the western border of Illinois. I've had a lot of time on SRAM's latest access group sets, and the new Apex felt very familiar. Apart from a slightly different manufacturing process, these are the same shifters of the more expensive Rival and Force. The broad profile of the lever is a big improvement over the old shape ETAP levers, with a better feel and improved interaction from the hood. You can alter the reach via a 2.5mm hex bolt on the hood, just like Rival Axis, and the scallop shape of the triggers is easy to locate when bouncing across rough ground. Additionally, my test bike was equipped with SRAM's wireless blips mounted on the underside of the bar. I love the functionality of the blips, though I'm still not 100% convinced that disposable design is the best way to go. SRAM claims they will last a normal usage rider for nearly 10 years, however in high usage applications like time trial or triathlon, that would drop to around 4 years. Shifting on Apex is also a familiar experience, with the rear derailleur moving smoothly and efficiently up and down the rear block. The sprung-loaded clutch does a superb job of keeping the chain bounce in check. I got no hint of slap, even when riding rutted, root-strewn sections of single track. And on pure gravel roads, the Apex rear derailleur was completely unfaced. The shift quality across the 1144 tooth cassette felt consistent, though I have to say that the grey finish of the chain looks somewhat used, even when it's clean. Onto the brakes, and the calipers follow the same design as the latest Force Axis brakes, with reprofiled internals and a new two-piece body. The performance and feel are very familiar, but what was most notable was the lack of any rotor scrape. Even after many hours in the saddle in hot, dry and dusty conditions, the wheels turned smoothly and the braking remained quiet throughout. 
The chainset is practically a carryover from Rival Axis 2. The matte finish with the laser etched logos may not look as premium as the high gloss of Rival, but under its skin, it's the same unit. I'll be busy getting more time on both versions of SRAM's new Apex, so watch out for my reviews on flightradar.com very soon. We'll also be getting these group sets off of their bikes and putting each component on the scales. That video will be coming up on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed with the bell icon ticked so that you see it before anyone else. If you want to know more about the latest SRAM Force Group set, why not check out this video?